Welcome to Electrified, it's your host, Dylan Loomis. Hopefully you're having a great day. And a quick shout out to my newest patrons, Steven and Donald, thank you guys very much. First up, we have a Reddit post about FSD Beta 10.2, automatically cleaning the windshield, windshield dirty in front of cameras. So here you see that alert on the screen and apparently it just takes over and sprays some windshield wiper fluid and cleans the screen. Now, this was the first time that I have seen this feature. A pretty funny comment, first reaction is sweet, second reaction, I wonder what the false positives are, how do I invest in windshield washer fluid? Would love to hear from you guys how well this feature actually works. Next up, a quick note on gas prices that have nearly doubled in the last 17 months from the pandemic lows. US oil prices have skyrocketed $120 since crashing to negative $40 a barrel in April 2020. Crude is on track to finish Monday above $80 a barrel for the first time in seven years. And yes, oil prices can be negative. Simply put, they trade mostly on futures contracts and over time oil degrades and it costs money to store it. So if there is no current demand and an oil futures contract is nearing the end of it, no one's going to want to buy that contract if there's no immediate demand for that oil. So in theory, that company would wanna be paid to store it and they would have to deal with the degradation of the oil. But the national average price for gasoline hit a fresh seven year high of $3.27 per gallon on Monday of this week week. Next up, Ford is updating their own subscription service, seemingly to look better to potential investors, but it's their Sync 3 navigation, which is a heavy maps-based update. But getting into the details, it's one update per year. It's $200 for five years of service and an additional $40 for the USB that it looks like you pay every year. There's no extra fee with a digital download, and there are other annual update options available, a preloaded USB shipped directly to you for $150, and one file download option for $109, whatever that may mean. Now, I personally have zero experience with Sync 3 and the usability of it, but I do know that most Fords have CarPlay and most people can plug in their phone and get maps and real-time data for free. So I'd love to hear from you guys that have maybe used Sync 3. Is this subscription service worth it? Next up, we have a pretty cool item for all Cybertruck fans. So we have a 3000 piece Lego kit, essentially from Mattel of the Cybertruck that yes, it will be interactive. It'll cost $250 and is dropping this Friday the 15th. All links for this are linked below if you're interested. And no, I am not getting any money from this. I just think it's really cool. I might honestly get one myself. And it even comes with multiple side glass options. So you can have the pre Franz broke it or post Franz broke it look. And it includes a working removable tonneau cover, a sliding tailgate, and it has a height adjustable suspension. And here are some more images of the fully assembled kit. And once again, it goes on sale this Friday the 15th for $250 all links below if interested. Next up, a quick update from Dirty Tesla. It looks like you can no longer have your camera covered with the FSD beta. If you cover the camera while the beta is on, autopilot will tell you to take over immediately. And here is that warning on the screen. He added, he checked his phone at a red light and when the light turned green, the car beeped and said, please pay attention to the road, very cool. And he said, none of that reversing behavior that we're all expected to see here soon has come to the FSD updates just yet. And next up, it looks like with that 10.2 update that Tesla has switched all vehicles in the FSD beta pool to pure vision, completely axing radar from any vehicles within the beta fleet. So even if a member of the FSD beta program has radar are installed in the vehicle, Tesla's FSD beta program will not utilize it. Honestly, this shouldn't really come as a surprise. Tesla has been going pure vision for some time now. Moving on, a strong reminder that just because Tesla's headquarters is no longer in Palo Alto, that does not mean they're not still active there, hiring and expanding quickly. As Tesla has taken over HP's campus in California, the Registry San Francisco, a publication about Bay Area real estate said, Tesla just completed an office expansion in its hometown for an additional 325,000 square feet, according to sources with knowledge. Tesla will be leasing the space at 1501 Page Mill Road from Hewlett Packard in a building that once served as the global HQ for the tech giant HP. The lease is believed to be for a 10 year period and this new space represents roughly 10% of the entire market available in Palo Alto. And no word yet on specifically what this new space will be used for. 
A quick note here about Tesla Texas, it has already created 5,000 new jobs in Austin in 2021, the most of any company in Austin. This coming from a report from the Austin Chamber of Commerce, the data show that Tesla is the company to pledge and create the most jobs in 2021 in Austin. So now we get into the Tesla sales data for September coming out of China and the numbers are big. Tesla China sold 56,000 vehicles in September, local sales 52,100, export 3,800, this coming from the CPCA. And this is indeed a 27% month over month increase. However, the better number to look at is the third month in the quarter, going back to quarter two, because September was indeed the third month in the quarter of quarter three, historically when Tesla delivers the most vehicles domestically. So taking a look at our simple chart here, as you can see, June was the last third month of quarter two. So comparing that to this current month of September, we see almost a 100% increase in domestic sales going from 28,100 to 52,100. And in September, 33,000 of those deliveries were Model Y and 22,900 were Model 3. So thus far in 2021, Tesla has delivered over 204,600 vehicles just domestically in China. Now, to give us all some context, if we go to Ray for Tesla on Twitter, you can see NEO, same time frame, thus far in 2021, 66,300 units, Li Auto, 55,200, and Xpeng, 56,400. So Tesla tripling and quadrupling up the local Chinese competition so far in 2021. And what makes us even more impressive is that Tesla is posting these really strong sales figures in the midst of an overall weak market when it comes to passenger car sales in China. Passenger car sales data in September totaled 1.6 million, down 17% from a year earlier, according to CPCA data. And an anecdote from Tesla China Rider, I can confirm it's crazy how many Model Ys without a license plate are driving around. If it wouldn't be for the red color of my Model Y, it would just disappear in the masses. Tesla is going to have a bombastic quarter four in China. So any concerns about local Chinese demand should definitely be put on hold, at least for now. And we'll circle back in December, the third month of the fourth quarter, to see how this growth continues. But moving on, I know Rob mentioned this interview the other day with JB Straubel. I will second that notion. You should definitely check out this interview if you haven't yet. I've linked it all below for you. A lot of what he said is that all of these other automakers promises to do everything EV. Well, they haven't really done the math. They haven't done the supply chain logistics to figure out how they're all going to get there at the same time. And he said that he was amazed at the skepticism that there still was even after the Roadster and the Model S were met with great reviews. Even after delivering those, we kind of imagined that people would see this and go, clearly this is the future. This is all gonna work. All the car companies were gonna copy this right away and we'll have to go really fast to figure out how we can carve out a niche. It just didn't happen. Customers loved it. It was a runaway hit with reviewers and magazines and customers, but the copying and market change didn't happen. And with regard to Legacy Auto not doing the supply chain math, JB said, you need to do that or else you know you haven't really solved it. It has the feeling to me of kind of like a giant overbooked flight. Once again, full interview link below if you have time to check it out. And last thing for today, earlier today, actually Tesla released a new video on its YouTube channel about crash testing and the safety and how they go about the engineering behind Tesla having the safest vehicles on the road. Very interesting video. We need more just like this where the engineers are explaining what's going on behind the scenes so people can better understand Tesla. But once again, link below if you want to check it out. It's only a few minutes long. But that is all for today. Please take a second to like the video if you did. Hope you all have a wonderful day and a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.